So in this situation, I like to warm up the tent, get back in my sleeping bag, take a little nap. It's nothing like a good hot tent with stove burning in the morning when you're a little chilly, getting ready for breakfast. Man, I really, really like it a lot. It's kind of like a cowboy TV. On the Appalachian Trail, we called it uh, Appalachian Trail TV and cowboy TV. So this is a pan that I've used for a long time. I like this size little pan, and once I wear it out, I'll get a new one. Spam singles, every single morning on the Appalachian Trail, I eat spam singles. I'd have one as a booster, just to get me going, good calories and fat, easy to carry. But if I had five or six days to my next resupply, I would have five or six spam singles in my pack. And uh, it's heavy at first, but it gets lighter and lighter every day. So I'm just gonna fry that guy up. There we go. Brought some eggs. Get those in. A little bushcraft breakfast going on. Can't beat that. So I got my spread out. The survival tabs are always good. I keep them around, you know, just in case you have extra days worth of sustenance. I also keep a can of sardines that I don't always eat, but I do always carry. And I love them when I eat them. Just gotta time it. Don't eat them before you go to bed and don't, you know, don't carry around a stinky sardine can in bear country. Got my little Witterlings hatchet. Love that guy. My cook kit there. This is a new coffee setup. Check that one out. Just a little bit, make some coffee. Really simple setup this time. If I bring the hot tent, I try to bring less of anything else. You know, I didn't bring my warmest sleeping bag or anything like that. I have some real bargain deals on the sleeping bag setup, so I'll let you know in the future. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. Flip that spam over. We also have a contest going on. At the end of the video, I have a little spot for that. Not a contest, but more of a giveaway. And, uh, check that out towards the end. Second chance in that giveaway. So we just... Uh, I'm gonna cook this spam away. Get my setup for coffee. So I carry my grits in a single serving. My butter in single servings, the amount I might need. It's cold out, so you can, I carry butter now. Getting ready for those eggs. she wrote spam eggs cheese grits that's a normal breakfast for me and I try to eat good in the woods I try to eat something that I enjoy something I actually eat that doesn't upset my stomach you have to think about these things you are gonna be stuck in the woods with upset stomach if you decide to eat something brand new guy on the Appalachian Trail ordered all these cliff bars for the whole trail. Spent like hundreds of dollars. And a week into the trail, it gives him the worst gas ever. And honestly, I stopped hiking with him. He was kind of a jerk anyway, but but on top of being a jerk, he was a jerk in other ways. Like, he didn't care that they gave him gas, that his stomach was always rattling around and they were terrible. 
he bought them, so he's eating them, and he's staying in shelters. And yeah, I'm surprised the shelter didn't explode or burn down because of his his uh, flammable gases. But yeah, it's uh, funny the type of people you run into on the Appalachian Trail. This is a cook kit. This just like the one I like to use when I'm long distance hiking. I always keep it on me. It's ultralight titanium. That's why I use titanium. It's because it doesn't weigh much. I can put it in a campfire without melting it. And uh, yeah, I just, I always keep a titanium pot. And uh, I have my mini bull design choke hazard turbo. If you guys are interested in, in this uh, carbon felt wrap for the handle, if you're interested in the carbon felt windscreen, you guys go to minibulldesign.com. Tenny, Tenny from Mini Bull is an awesome guy. He's got a YouTube also. And uh, you can get this carbon felt from him. You can get the Choke Hazard Turbo set with the Foster's Pot and all that. All put together like the one I'm about to show you. Have a nice little alcohol stove. See, now I won't burn my hands. The wrap really works wonders and uh, it doesn't burn. So I have my... Uh, This is my ATP Angry Troll Pot, flat bottom, Foster's Pot. It's got the wicking on it, so I don't burn my hands if I use it as a coffee pot. It's got the silicone around the top, so you don't burn your mouth. Got my stove, pot stand, and carbon fiber felt windscreen. It's ultralight setup. If I'm really going ultralight, I only carry the cook kit and the beer can pot. The Angry Troll Pod, the ATP. So, you guys go to minibulldesigns.com and uh, I'll leave a link down below if I remember to. If I don't, ask me in the comments and I'll leave you one. So, here's the Choke Hazard Turbo. My wife has the regular Choke Hazard. It burns a little lower. This one burns a little higher. When we're together, we can use both stoves and boil water faster in mine and simmer food or whatever slower in hers works out really well like that you just jam this silicon tube in there jam the other one into the fuel reservoir got the fuel reservoir there and you just add the fuel in that end it goes into the other end it soaks into carbon felt pads that are in there and tinny also gives you extra ones in case you need them and uh I've got extra tubing there, but I haven't worn out this tubing in a long time, so I'm I'm really impressed with it. Silicon is heat resistant, just like the material in the stove jack and the hot tent project that I'm working on, the new hot tent project. Uh, don't don't think I'm denying that one. This is uh, my test run for the season of the season of the regular hot tent setup. So I'm going to make some coffee here. A little fresh water so it generally only takes me around an ounce to boil water you know not a slam to the full to the top pot of water but you know a cup of water for a cup of coffee um, you know it doesn't take doesn't take too much and you can carry enough you know for me if it's an ounce or so for a cup of coffee then if I have a 20 ounce bottle, I know I have 20 cups of coffee in the future. So while through hiking the whole Appalachian Trail or through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, that's one of the ways I would keep track and make sure I had two or three coffees a day, you know, so I could get those boost when I needed them, things like that. So I gotta flip that egg, got the spam and egg going. You know, you'd be surprised, but a lot of through hikers eat nothing but noodles all the time and and junk food. Now, I did eat a lot of noodles and a lot of junk food. I ate everything I could get my hands on. But, you know, including spam and, and eggs, when I'd hike out of town, I'd have six eggs or a dozen eggs. And I would eat two eggs every single meal. And I had a little one egg pan that would just barely cook two eggs. So I'd cook two eggs and I'd eat them. I'd cook two eggs and I'd eat them. So it's two for breakfast, two for lunch, two for dinner, 
And the second day, I'd be out of eggs. Sometimes I'd carry them for the third day just to have some variety on the third day, spread it out. So I've been using this coffee setup at home when I want one cup. It's all silicon, pops up. It's really nice. It cleans easy. I actually like it a lot. I'll leave a Amazon link down below so you guys can check that out again. You might have seen it before, but it, you know, it works. I have about three different single cup coffee makers, maybe four like this that are drip. Now I have the bigger cone and uh, I just fold these down with a little origami and we're good to go on the uh, fitting the green one. Works out pretty nicely. I brought a little container of some really good coffee beans all fresh ground up. Got those guys uh, ground up and in this container and the exact amount of coffee I need for this trip. And I brought my little scoop in the container just to help me make sure I didn't use too much because I'm all about accidentally using too much and then not having any for the next day or the day after that or the day after that. So you really need to conserve when you're on the trail in the first few days. It's a hard lesson to learn. I once had a group of uh, from a camp of hikers that knew I had run out of snacks. It was kind of a joke at the time, but they gave me one of their breakfasts and it was just a mess for like eight people, like breakfast for like some kind of cornbread with fruit and nuts all in it. And it, man, it was probably the best thing I've ever eaten. But a joke about me running out of snacks because I wouldn't stop eating them turned into me getting all this really, really good food. And I shared it with my friends. They were through hiking the trail and then I ate tons of it till it was gone because it was kind of heavy. So my grits, I put about that much water, about a quarter cup of grits, dry grits. I used the five minute quick grits, not the instant and not the old fashioned full cook. They just take too long. And they all different types of grits taste different. The instant tastes different than the five minute and so on. So my favorite as a Southern boy from middle Georgia is, you know, making grits with the five minute grits. And I always usually cook them, you know, 10, 20 minutes. It's not that I cook them only for five minutes. Um, sometimes you have to add a little extra water to them. I use good butter and also super seriously sharp white cheddar cheese and if you guys don't know try to avoid yellow cheese get some white cheddar cheese you'll get healthy cheese i'm lactose intolerant and healthy cheese never has lactose in it and it doesn't bother me at all so i got the coffee going got the grits going everything's looking good you know i, I cooked uh, a lot when i do long distance hiking i cooked a lot i used a lot of mountain house also um you know, there's a few things I, I still can't eat, like Nutella. I touched on that before, but I, you know, put a bottle of Nutella in my pack and I would just keep eating it until it made me sick. And it has powdered milk in it, and I believe that it was messing up my lactose intolerance. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan anymore. I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't eat junk like Pop-Tarts and things like that anymore. So, you know, I try to eat more quinoa and healthier stuff and, yeah, try to avoid the processed stuff as much as possible. It's not always possible, especially when you want something good like meat. You know, the spam is only got five ingredients on the front of the label of the spam label, so it's pretty awesome. And that's only the regular variety of spam, the old faithful, not the different flavors of spam like bacon, any of those flavors, not that one. You know, just go for their original, regular, only five ingredients. Man, that coffee's looking good. All right, so in goes the butter for the grits. Let it, I let it cook in a little bit. Gives it better flavor. And sometimes I add a little bit at the end also. I'll save a little bit. Get that in there. I do quite get questions about the tent melting and all this jazz, and I've had this set up for like five years now, and I have not melted this tent, carbon monoxided myself. Tents are inherently uh, breathable, so it's not a big problem. They are inherently ventilated. So, you know, you're not gonna sit in here all day feeding it stick, staying warm, but it is nice for the time that you do do it to have it. 
you know, 10 minutes to pack up, 10 minutes to set up. It's not that much out of your day compared to building a shelter and building things. It might take you all day. And most of the time in a survival scenario, you need to keep moving. And if you can keep moving and it only takes you 20 minutes out of a day to set up a tent that has a wood burning stove that lasts for years, then, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. Natural shelters are, are awesome. I, I've used them myself, but like I said, it takes all day. So here's that super sharp white cheddar cheese. This is uh, upstate New York cheddar cheese, you know, whichever one you can find, but just, you know, try to avoid the yellow stuff and uh, get the good cheese, the real stuff. Get that all in there nice. Let it get good and melty. A lot of times I like to let the grits sit for a few minutes also because they're too hot anyway. And it lets them cook just a little bit more and get a little bit more creamy. If you haven't tried them, check them out. If you're used to grits or already into them, then check out how I made them. Got the coffee coming. Notice I have the little fire maple stove on the ground there. I always have a backup stove and canister um, on some trips. Not all trips, but, uh, you know, I just like to keep backups. Ah, coffee, coffee. Right, wrapping this up, getting this stuff all cooked. I've got a my whole spread there. And I, I do fall asleep at night. A lot of the questions I'll try to answer. I do fall asleep at night with the stove going. It goes out in an hour or two, and I'm in a sleeping bag that's warm enough to keep me comfortable all night long. So I just stay in my sleeping bag. And sometimes at three, at four, five, sometimes late at six, I'll wake up anyway. And I'll have some sticks ready to go, throw them in there, start it up. And sometimes I'll go find some more stuff or I'll have plenty. Just stoke it up, get it going, and get back in my sleeping bag like you saw earlier and take a nap. Man, this is turning out to be a perfect bushcraft breakfast for me. And these foldable origami plastic plates, they're my favorites. That's, that's a cup, I think. And uh, they're easy to find when you're they're in your pack. You can find an orange or a blue thing like that. And it, it packs flat. So I just stick it down the back of the pack and don't even notice it there. So great to have a clean place to chop things, to mess with food, to cook, to eat off of. My old faithful pigskin gloves. Woohoo. The old red felt inside pigskin work gloves, my favorites. Got the fire stoked. It's hot enough in there that I do not have my down jacket on. If you guys want to know how hot it is, that's how hot it is. And uh, yeah, if anybody wants to send me one of those cool laser thermometer things, then I'll shoot some temperatures around the tent one day when I'm out in the woods in the snow and stuff and show how warm inside the tent it actually is. But until then, you're just going to have to guess by how many jackets I've taken off. And I do have the door open for the camera set up and stuff. So it's, uh, I'm warm in there with the door wide open. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I, I really, really enjoy having this setup. And the next setup's going to be even better. And on our trips with guests, I'll be able to set up two hot tents. I have two to three guests in each tent. And that'll be pretty awesome for our overnight winter survival backpacking trips we do. You know, because of the baby and all, we've had to slack off on those kind of trips. But now we're going to get back to them. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Big shout out to Joe's Neon. Joe's Neon, big shout out to you. If you guys don't know him, check him out on YouTube. Also, Jamie Mansell, he's one of my favorite guys in my last Patreon video. I told you guys I was putting my money where my mouth was, and I, I pledged a dollar to his Patreon. 
It's not much, but you know, anything helps. Got my mess halfway cleaned up, a little bit of fire still going. I'll just kind of relax. My coffee's around here somewhere, I bet. See you guys next time. There he is. You guys get outside and go do something. And if you guys value our channel and you'd like to help out us is just to go to Patreon and give a dollar. Wise chief, big boy. Whoa.